every company has a responsibility to uh, both, you know, recruit, um, hire, and and retain uh, women. And I think you know it's a snowball effect. Uh, the more you do it, uh, the, the more that you will uh, become a magnet for other talented women. We're meeting the chief technology officer of an autonomous driving company, Laura Major from Motional. Laura is also the author of What to Expect When You're Expecting Robots, a book about the future of human robot collaboration. Laura is behind teams of engineers that are developing robo taxis, replacing drivers with software. And it's a question of when rather than if we'll start to see these cars on the roads. Motional was born out of a $4 billion joint venture with Aptiv and Hyundai, with the aim to introduce driverless cars for ride hailing fleets by as early as next year. And we're making driverless vehicles a reality. What do you think needs to happen to see women elevated in certain parts of the tech and robotics industry? So I think every company has a responsibility to uh, both, you know, recruit, um, hire, and and retain uh, women. And I think you know it's a snowball effect. Uh, the more you do it, uh, the, the more that you will uh, become a magnet for, uh, you know, talent, other talented women. A big part of it is creating a culture um, where diverse ideas can be brought to the table and, and an inclusive culture where, where women feel like they can contribute um, and that their ideas and, um, and contributions will be accepted and, and will be valued. Um, and, and I think, you know, women are, are drawn to work uh, in companies where they, they see other women um, so that, you know, they have role models. Um, so both at the leadership level, but also um, as peers, you know, they, they want to be in a room and on a team that has other women on that team as well. I've heard you mention before that you had a mentor early in your career. How important do you think mentors are for budding entrepreneurs? Yeah, mentors absolutely are, are incredibly important. Um, and when you find somebody that you click with, where you know you, you really see value in their advice, and and they become a champion of yours, and, and they kind of understand your uh, unique you know contributions and approach, um, then it's something to to put time and energy into. I think it can um, sometimes be. Uh, hard to find the time as a budding entrepreneur. You're you're busy and uh, you always have more to do than time to do it. But sometimes pausing and asking for advice or seeking input from those that you respect and, and that you trust um, can really you know benefit you not only in in the moment and whatever challenges you're facing, but also you know further out into your career. There's still some you know advice from early on uh, that I put into practice um, every day. Laura, going back a bit now, um, both of your parents were entrepreneurs. How much of an inspiration were they to you? Yeah, absolutely. I grew up, you know, in a family where we had a family business and uh, it was a part of all of our lives. You know, my brother and I would go into the office, you know, with my parents on the weekend uh, when, when we took a vacation, which was rarely um, they would, you know, always be making phone calls back to the office. Um, so I grew up, you know, that hard work, um, that ownership mindset, you know, was was ingrained in, in my family life. And I think it really, you know, created the, the sort of the foundation for me of, of how, you know, how I approach my work. Um, and, you know, and that again, that ownership mindset, you know, if you're if you face a challenge, there's no challenge too big that you have to persist. You have to find a way through. No one else is going to solve that problem for you. And now you're in charge of large teams of people. What would you say your leadership style is? Uh, my leadership style, I would say, is um, is. It's pretty collaborative. Um, I think, you know, I, I try, I don't try to have all the answers myself. Um, I know what, you know, I know areas where I have a lot of expertise and areas where, where I might have stronger team members who have more expertise than me. And so, you know, a big part of my overall leadership style and strategy is to bring together, you know, a complementary team uh, where we can, you know, cover um, all the areas that we need to. I mean, we're building a system of systems, so we need expertise in, in you know, many engineering fields. And so, you know, building a strong team with, again, a, compl a complementary set of strengths um, and then composing them in a way that allows them to collaborate closely uh, to, to be able to solve problems um, is, is a big part of, you know, of my approach. Um, I also try to pair that. I think it's really important to pair that with a compelling vision. 
Um, so, you know, we, we already have a, an exciting um, mission to go after to create a driverless future, but it's not just about that end goal. It's also about the journey to get there. And so creating, you know, a technical roadmap that can allow us to take one step at a time and, and show progress to ourselves to build our confidence that we're on the right path, that we're making the right decisions, that we're achieving the right milestones um, to lead up to this final, you know, this final outcome that's years in the making um, is a really important part of, of my role, um, you know, to, to kind of guide our teams and make sure that, that they're set up on the right track for success.